This lecture is part of an online algebraic geometry course on schemes, and where it will be about separable schemes and morphisms. So we'll start with some background. Um, in analysis, we have two um, really basic topological properties, that of being Hausdorff and that of being compact. Um, the trouble is, um, in algebraic geometry, these two properties are not really terribly useful because if we look at, say, varieties in the Zariski topology, then um, they're almost never Hausdorff. I mean, points are Hausdorff, but almost anything other than that is not going to be Hausdorff. In fact, in, in a variety in the Zariski topology, um, any two non-empty open sets intersect, so it's about as far as possible from being Hausdorff. Similarly, with compactness, varieties are almost always um, compact, unless you sort of allow funny sorts of vari abstract varieties with infinite numbers of open sets or whatever. So um, compactness is not terribly useful either. And we want to know what is the correct analog of these for schemes. For example, um, n-dimensional projective space over C is compact in the usual complex topology. Um, and A to the NC is not compact, again, in the usual complex topology. So we would like some property of the abstract varieties, which holds for projective varieties, but not for affine varieties. And similarly, we'd like to find some analog of Hausdorff for them. Um, so the um, analog for schemes or varieties Um, Hausdorff um, is replaced by the property of being separable. Um, in fact, the word separable in general topology sometimes means Hausdorff, especially in French speaking countries. Um, and the analogue of being compact, well, it has two analogues. Th th this corresponds to the notion of completeness. Um, for varieties. So we discussed the fact that projective varieties were complete in an earlier course. Um, however, we would also like relative versions of these. So if we've got a map from a scheme S to a base scheme S, then we can also talk about separable morphisms. Um, and instead of talking about complete morphisms, you usually talk about proper morphisms. So um, the um, correct analogue of compactness turns out to be related to the notion of a proper morphism, and the correct analogue of being Hausdorff turns out to be related to the notion of a separable morphism. Very informally, um, a morphism is separable if and only if it's all, all its fibres are Hausdorff, and a morphism is proper if and only if its fibres are all um, satisfy whatever the ant correct analogue of compactness is. So um, we have to find um, a good way to define the analog of Hausdorff. So in topology, so in general topology, a space X is Hausdorff if and only if the diagonal of X times X is closed. And this is kind of almost obvious if you draw a picture. So here's a copy of X and a copy of X. And, and um, here's the diagonal. And if we've got a point X, Y with X not equal Y, what we can do is we can choose a little neighborhood of X and a little neighborhood of Y. And we end up with a little neighborhood of um, x times y, so, so, so if this neighbourhood is u and this is v, then 
u times v is the neighborhood of x times y. And if the diagonal is closed, we, it means we can find a neighborhood u times v of x, y um, disjoint from the diagonal. So u and, and v are also are, are, are disjoint. And, and conversely, if you can find disjoint neighborhoods of u and v, then the, then the diagonal is closed. So we can use this idea to define um, separability or schemes. So we say, we say a scheme X is separated if um, the map from X to X times X is a closed immersion. Um, um, in fact, it's not difficult to prove this is equivalent to the image being closed. It's obvious that closed immersion implies the image is closed. The other implication requires a little bit more thought, but isn't very difficult. Um, well, more generally, we want to define the concept of a separated morphism. So X to S is a separated morphism if the diagonal map from X to X times over SX, here we've got these two maps here, if this thing here is a closed immersion or has closed image, uh, as before these two conditions turn out to be equivalent. Um, so informally, a morphism is, if a morphism is separated, you expect all its fibers to be separated. It's, it's not quite equivalent, but it's very close. Um, um, so, um, X is separated as a scheme is equivalent to saying the morphism from X to the spectrum of Z is a separated morphism because this is this is the terminal object in the in the family of schemes. So let's have some examples. The first example is the traditional example of a non-separated or non-house door space. You just take the line with two origins. Um, so in general topology, you can take two copies of the real line and stick them together um, by identifying everything except the origin. So you get something that looks like this. There are two copies of the lines and there are two origins and you identify all the other points. And of course, we can do the same thing in algebraic geometry except we take the affine line, which is, say, spectrum of k of x, and this is spectrum of k of x, and they're glued over the affine line minus the origin, which is the spectrum of k of x, x to the minus 1. Um, now, um, of course, when you um, take the product, you don't give this the product topology that you use in general topology. If you did that, all you would do is get exactly the, de the definition of Hausdorff, which doesn't work. So um, this thing here should, of course, have the Zariski topology, um, which is finer than the product topology. So if you draw a picture of this in the Zariski topology, the um, um, X times, well, I guess we're working over the point spectrum of K, sort of looks like this. What, what it does is it has a sort of double X axis and a double Y axis. Uh, sorry, I've got the X and Y the wrong way around. So this is a sort of double X axis. And if you look carefully at it, you'll see that there are four points. Um, um, sort of, I mean, it's, it's got a sort of quadruple origin. And if you look at the diagonal, you see it contains two of these four points. And these two red points are in the closure of the diagonal, but not in the diagonal. <laughs> 
So if the diagonal is not closed, and th th this is an example of a non Hausdorff um, scheme or a non Hausdorff morphism from X to spectrum of K. Um, Another example, suppose we've got any morphism from the spectrum of A to the spectrum of B, where A and B are, are rings. And this is always um, separated. And um, what we have to do is, um, if we call this X and we call this Y, then we're looking at um, uh, x to x times over y x. So we're looking at this map of schemes here, and we have to unwind it and figure out what this is in terms of algebras. Well, that's just a tensed over b a mapping to a. Sorry, the map goes the other way. Very confusing getting these all the right way around. Um, and we have a map going this way to A. And the point is the map from A tensor over B A to A is surjective. In other words, A is just A tensor over B A modulo some ideal. So um, um, this, is, this is just more or less by definition a closed immersion. So all morphisms between affine varieties are automatically separated. Um, from this, it's fairly easy to deduce the um, fact I mentioned earlier that if the image of the diagonal map is closed, then the diagonal map is in fact a closed immersion. So, so to check something is separated, you just need to check the image of the diagonal map is, is closed and there's a risky topology. Um, so let's have a third example. Let's take X to be equal to Y to be the line with two origins. So here we've got X looking like this. And we're just mapping it to Y, which looks exactly the same. And you notice that X and Y are both not separated. And Y is not separated. But the morphism x to y is separated. In fact, um, since x equals y, the diagonal map from x to x times over y x um, is uh, just the identity because x times over y x is just equal to x and any identity map um, x to x is a closed immersion. So the fact that a morphism is from x to y is separable doesn't imply anything about x or y individually being separable. Roughly speaking, what it means is that um, if you've got an open affine subset of y, then the inverse image of that is, is, is a separable scheme. Um, so that there is actually that there has actually been a change in terminology uh, in the old terminology. Um, schemes were called pre-schemes, and um, separable schemes um, were just called schemes. So, so these things here are separable and these things here are not necessarily separable. So things like um, if you read old copies of um, growth index elements of algebraic geometry, he initially started off by using the, the terms pre-scheme and scheme instead of scheme and separable scheme. So that's one minor thing to watch out for. Um, there's a variation of being separated called quasi-separated you sometimes come across. Um, a morphism X 
to S is quasi-separated um, means the diagonal map from X to X times over SX is quasi-compact. Now, any closed immersion is quasi-compact, so separated implies quasi-separated. Um, actually, the notion of being quasi-separated is not used all that much in scheme theory. It's much more important in the theory of algebraic stacks and algebraic spaces. Um, so it's actually quite difficult to find examples of morphisms that are not quasi-separated. For instance, if you take the line with two origins, um, X, and you map it to spectrum of K, then X times over spectrum of K, X, the map from X to this, is quasi-compact. In fact, X is notarian, and if you've got any notarian scheme, then any map from it to another space is automatically quasi-compact because every open set is quasi-compact. So any map from X to anything else is, is automatically quasi-separated. Um, so if you just want to stick to notarian schemes, then every map whatsoever is automatically quasi-separated. As I said, you really have to think a bit to find an example of a morphism that is not quasi-separated. Um, well, here's an example. Um, let's take x1 equals x2 um, to be copies of the spectrum of k, x1, x2, x3. So this is infinite dimensional affine space. And what we glue, what, what we do is we glue x1 and x2 along um, the, the uh, infinite dimensional space minus the origin. So the origin is either the point naught, naught, naught in coordinates, or it's the ideal x1, x2, and so on. Um, and um, if you look at this, we, we then get a map from, uh, if, if, we, if we call x the result of gluing these, then if we look at x times over s, x to x to x to s, where, where s is just the spectrum of k, so we're working over a point. If you look at the map from x to this, what we do is we, you can take the image of x1 times over s, x2, which is contained in x times over s, x, and this is an affine scheme, so it's quasi-compact. And the inverse image of this in X is, 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 just, um, is just affine space, infinite dimensional affine space minus the origin. Um, so uh, we saw earlier that infinite dimensional affine space minus the origin was a was an example of um, a scheme that wasn't quasi compact. So here we have an example where the diagonal map from x to x times x is not quasi compact. There's an there's an open affine quasi compact set there whose Im inverse image is not quasi compact. As you see, this example is a bit convoluted and not the sort of thing you're likely to encounter in practice. Um, so um, we'll finish with an application of separability. We have the following problem. Is the intersection of two open affine sets an open affine set? So the open affine sets form a base for the topology of any scheme. And it's really convenient if, if this base is closed under in taking intersections. It avoids a certain amount of technical mess at times. And the answer is no in general. <laughs>
So here's an example of an intersection of two open affine sets that's not open affine. Let's take X to be the plane with two origins. So X is equal to X1 union X2, where X1 is isomorphic to X2 is isomorphic to the affine plane. And um, X1 intersection X2 is equal to the plane minus the origin. And we saw earlier that this is not affine. So you definitely can get um, cases when the intersection of two open affine sets isn't affine. However, um, you notice this space here is uh, very definitely a non-separable scheme. And in fact, if you, if you um, don't allow this sort of non-separable behavior, then, th th then the intersection of two open affine sets is, is indeed affine. So suppose we have a morphism F from X to S with F separated and S affine. Um, then the intersection is open affine for U V open affine subsets of X. You can check that if you drop the condition that S is affine or F is separated, then um, the intersection of two open affines need not be open affine in general. And um, to do this, it's fairly easy. We just notice that U times over SV is open affine because U, V and S are all affine. And if, you've, if U, V and S are all affine, then, then the product is just affine because it's the tensor product of the corresponding algebras. So this is open affine in X times over S, X. And we know that U intersection V is the inverse image of U times over S, V under the diagonal map. from um, x to x times over s x. Um, and um, now we notice that uh, the, for, for a closed immersion, the inverse image of an open affine is open affine. Um, so, so if uh, X to S is separated, then this diagonal map is a closed immersion. So the inverse image of U times V is open affine. So we find U intersection V is an affine open set. Um, okay, uh, so next lecture, what we're going to do is review valuation rings in order to um, characterize separated and proper morphisms using valuation rings. <laughs>